Hi, this is Melissa with A Creative Journey with Melissa, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own shaker card with items that you may have around the house. Um, I like to reuse my items. I like to reuse packaging. I like to do a lot of that stuff. Um, go green, as they say. Um, I also like... I like everybody basically lives on a budget or should anyway. Um, and I don't like to spend a whole bunch of money getting things that I could possibly reuse or utilize that I have already at home. So I showed you last week, if you didn't check out the video, please be sure to check out my video um, about an awesome shaker card kit that you can create. It comes with dies and the foam and all that stuff and it's awesome, I love it. However, not everybody can afford to go out and buy those and I was very fortunate to be able to get two of them and I was thrilled to do so. But again, not everybody can do that. And truthfully, um, sometimes it may not allow you to think out of the box. So I like to think outside of the box. I like to give you guys a jumping point so that you can utilize this technique with anything that you come to and really just cre make your creation come to fruition and um, hopefully you'll share it with me. Um, we have a lot of amazing, amazing customers. I have one specifically, Robin, that has inspired this card. Um, she was asking me uh, uh, some ideas as far as a graduation card. And although the graduation card I'm creating here is not necessarily what she would be looking for, at least it'll give her some ideas as to what she can do in the future. Um, but I love to hear feedback. Um, we take it seriously. We love to hear input. We love to hear suggestions on what you'd like to see in the future. So please be fr feel free to send us a message or comment or uh, on our YouTube videos or on our blog. And... Uh, we really do take those seriously, so I would love to hear from you if there's something that you're looking for that you'd like to know how to do. If I don't know how to do it, I'd like to learn too, because we're all learning here. Anyway, so what I'm going to create for you today is this awesome little shaker card, okay? And as you can see here, it has sequins in it. Now, I don't know about you, but I have tons of sequins, and I love sequins, and I love the way they look in shaker cards. They're really cool, but the problem with that is, is that I love to make tons of them. Um, I did a, uh, I started to do a, a video tutorial on this card. Uh, it was great, except um, the camera fell on my head. So I was a little frustrated and I decided to stop. So we're gonna redo this one. You probably won't see the other one. I might just do as a funny outtake and edit just that part so you can see it as it falls on my head and I go, oh no. But I'm not sure if I use expletives, so I'll have to check first. <laughs> At any rate, so this is the shaker card. You can utilize this um, these, this tutorial, these directions for really anything. You can use any shape, any die, any punch, anything that you want. So this is basically just giving you the directions on how to create it, and you can utilize your awesome creative brain and go from there. So with that, we used the Spinner Greetings stamp set. We will also be giving this away this week. Um, so if you choose to make your own with your items that you have at home, you can do so. I thought for sure that you would like to do that. And I think you will enjoy all the awesome sentiments and things you can create with this set. It has stars and balloons and hearts and of course sentiments and all different kinds of things you can add. It's also a great set for planners. If you like to um, decorate your planner for somebody's birthday or that you love someone or that it's somebody's anniversary or something like that, you can do that too. So this is the stamp set you'll be getting. Make sure that you are a subscriber to our YouTube channel and our blog slash newsletter list. And if you are subscribed to both and you stay on there, which I do check it every week, you will be entered to win one of our prizes every week. If you do so and you don't unsubscribe, you don't have to do anything else except just make sure you check the blog to see if you're a winner. If you do not uh, contact me within two weeks, um, your prize is forfeited. I have had a situation where someone had contacted me six weeks later, and um, it gets to be a little bit difficult for me to hold on to prizes that long because of the fact that I have one every week, and I've been doing that for quite some time, so it tends to be difficult. So I do appreciate you letting me know right away so I can get that prize out to you because I, like you, don't want to hold on to it because I'd love to see you create or utilize the prize that you've won, okay? So with that, you can check out our website at www.acreativejourneywithmelissa.com or www.acjwm.com. And of course, I also have www.melissamuller.com, but that's only if you feel like typing that too. At any rate, so let's get started. Um, some of you, this is going to be a long video, so I'm already warning you now, so if you want to watch this in segments, please feel free to do so. 
I don't want you to think that, um, normally I try to do short videos, but there's a lot of information in this one, and I think that you'll appreciate it. Um, many of you guys will get dyes or packaging, even kids' toys and things like that. Like this right here, this came with a die. I'm trying to put it back in, but it doesn't want to go. At any rate, the die came in like this, and you get packaging, you know, the clear packaging. It's like an acrylic type packaging. So it came in like this, all right? So that is basically what it came in like. Well, what I like to do is I like to cut them apart. And you've probably seen me do this before, but I'm gonna show you again, because why not? I like to cut these apart and keep the pieces. Just be careful because they can be sharp. But look at all this you can use. All that stuff we can reuse. So I cut out the panels here and the panels here, and then I place them in a little binder so that I can keep them ready to go for a project like this. So what I'm gonna be doing is, first I'm gonna show you what you need for the die cut portion, because we have a lot of supplies we'll need. I will take pictures and tell you on the blog post, so if you wanna write them down or print them or whatever you'd like, you're welcome to do so. We have our big shot right here. We're going to need, for the first thing, we're going to need um, this right here. This die is the uh, Echo Park A2 striped die, as you can see right here. Give you a little close-up shot right there. Okay, and basically all you're going to be using is this part right here. You're going to be cutting out the acrylic, and this is going to be going on your uh, shaker card. It's going to be the front, so all of your little shaker stuff embellishments inside don't fall out. That would be a problem, wouldn't it? So, we're going to need this base right here, okay? And then we're going to place this little cutie like this, okay? Excuse me. And then we're going to place this cute little piece of paper right here. So, oops, wrong, wrong one, my mistake. I just said acrylic, I wasn't listening to myself. Okay, so I'm gonna place this piece right here. I'm going to line it up right along the edge so it will cut basically where I need it to cut. If you line it up just a little bit towards the second part here, um, that's okay, you can just trim off the excess. So I'm gonna do that so I can show you how it works. It's no problem. And then we're going to, of course, use the top part to make your sandwich like this and then we're gonna run it through our machine, okay? If we can get it to go. If not, maybe we won't. <laughs> All right, yay, it's working. Sometimes you never know how it's gonna come out. All right. So we got that going. Now, if you hear all the clicks and clacks and all that stuff, don't worry. That's basically the plastic on the, um, uh, the platforms that are making cricks and creaks just so that they can do their work for you. So this here is what we created, and I'll show you a close-up. You can see right here that there's just a little edge that we'll have to cut off. That's it, no big deal. So I'm gonna do that real quick right now. I'm gonna take out my scissors, like so, and just trim that just to make sure it looks good. So we've got that done. So perfect, we'll throw the excess of this away, unless you think you can use it for something else, and of course you're welcome to keep it. Now I'm gonna take out the platforms again, but I'm taking out another die that I'm using, and this die that I'm going to be using is, I'm trying to get some fuzzies off of it. First we'll put the platform in like that. Um, this die is the Echo Park A2 with window card, and there's a close-up of that. Like I said, this one's gonna be probably a long one, so make sure that you have a little time or you wanna break it up in pieces, you're welcome to do that as well. So I am going to place this right in here, and I'm taking out my paper, and I want this side, I wanna utilize this side. It's a double-sided part. You could use this side too if you wanted, but I'm choosing this one. So what we're doing is we're gonna, again, make sure that we're utilizing just this side. We don't need this side, so we wouldn't need a full piece of paper. So we just need the piece of paper to cover this area right here, okay? And so what we're gonna do is just, here, I'll give you another close-up of that just to make sure that you understood what I was saying here. Like this part, you're gonna cut out this, 
and then this is going to be the window of what your uh, shaker card will be. So you probably have dies or punches that you can utilize this creation or this type of uh, tutorial for anything. You have a circle punch and then you have a larger circle punch, you can use that. Squares, uh, triangles, whatever punches you have, you can utilize that. You just need to make sure that you make one smaller and one bigger and utilize the bigger punch for your acrylic so that it can use for excuse me, so you can use that for the covering so that your embellishments don't come out of your shaker card, okay? So this right here is what we're cutting out, like I said. And I'm going to place this right on top of there. And we'll line that up. And in this one, because it's a card, it will make a crease mark, not a cut, um, where, they mat, where they meet right here. And that's okay. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna trim it just like we would have done, like we did with the acrylic piece, okay? So that's cut through, alrighty. So we have this, as you can see it, cut it apart. And this is really what we're looking for, these two pieces, okay? So we're gonna put the rest aside. My chair is creaky again, and this is a new chair, isn't that funny? I'll have to see if my husband and I can figure out to oil it. At any rate, so this is what we have right here. If you want to check and make sure that it's lined up, you want to make sure that it looks about the same size, and it is. It looks to be like there might be a little bit of a crease part here, so I may trim it. Yep. If you look really closely, see if you can see that little crease mark. Yep, right up top there. You can see there's a little crease mark. Well, I'm gonna trim it there because that's where it will fit the A2 card properly. So I'll trim that. This is just an extra piece. And if you saw my cards, I believe it was last week. Was it last week? Uh, no, it was the week before. I made these cards. Well, this is what I utilized. So I always like to use the extra pieces. And this is a great piece to use for a card or anything else, like even um, a Project Life page, or if you wanted to use it for a scrapbook page or a photo mat. So make sure that you save those big pieces so that you can utilize them for something else, because we don't like to throw away. Sadly, I wish I liked to throw away more, but I don't. So let me get my trimmer out. I will trim this piece. And I no longer need my big shot, so I can put that aside. And there's my little squeaky chair. So we have this right here. I'm just going to trim this up just a bit. Okay. Just line it up and trim away. So I just trimmed off the excess. So it should look a little bit more even as far as the border. Now the cool thing about me using this die for this piece of acrylic, the cool thing about that is it fits perfectly. It fits perfectly over this so that if you could see right there, you won't have to worry about it having any um, issues as far as no, not overlapping or anything like that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you two different ways. Um, you can have your card like I showed you, like this, or you can have it like this. Now this is obviously a happy birthday card. Um, this here, the only difference in this one is I used an embossing folder and I embossed this acrylic piece. Um, sometimes if you utilize some of the, uh, the uh, uh, packaging. You may have some scratches on it. You may see some imperfections. This isn't like the most perfect clear. You can see some scratches and stuff like that on there. So if that's the case and you don't like that, you can take your um, um, embossing folder and just emboss it. Now I'm going to do that real quick just for the heck of it. Why not? So I'm going to utilize the star one. I have a star embossing folder and I'm going to pull out my other uh, um, uh, platform so that I can show you how to do that. And then I lied. I actually said I wasn't going to use my big shot, but I decided to use it and do this for you. So this is how you would, um, if you really are um, specific and don't like to have any imperfections, which I get it, I, I get like that too, myself. Um, you will utilize this technique to uh, get, away, get away with any of the imperfections you may have and it won't be as obvious and you'll probably be much happier with your creation. So what we're gonna do 
is we're going to get the platform out. And I don't know if you've noticed, but you can see how there's like all kinds of marks and stuff like that. That doesn't ruin the integrity of the platform. It's fine. That's why I keep using them over and over again. At some point, they will get so worn I'll need to repair them, or I'm sorry, excuse me, replace them. But at this point, I've used them for a while and they're working great, so I don't need to do that yet. So we have this right here. This is the base platform that's clear. Then we're gonna place this one right here on top, like so. Then, we're going to take the clear piece of acrylic and place it right in, whoops, place it right inside, okay? And we just place it right in there, basically center it. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna at least try to get it in the middle if you can. And you close that up like a sandwich. You're gonna place that right on top of there. And then we're gonna place this right on top of there, okay? Hopefully this is the right platform because sometimes I pick out the wrong ones and that's a bummer. But this seems like it's the right one. So we're just gonna roll it right through. We're rolling it through using the handle. Okay. So that's done. So we're gonna pull out our clear one. And I'm gonna put the big shot on the side because I really don't need this anymore even though I've already said this once, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you what it looks like. Now, isn't that cool? So you can't really even tell that there's any imperfections. It looks great. And even if there are a few scratches on your item of the acrylic that you use, the packaging, you can't even tell because this is so cool. You're too busy looking at the awesome pattern, okay? So we have that. Now again, not everybody likes to do this, and that's fine. I just wanted to show you another option for yourself. If you wanted to do this, you could even just make a little shaker box and just put a few items in there and not a whole bunch like I usually do, and you'd have it set. You'd be perfectly great and you'd be all set and ready to go. So, so we have this right here. And now we're going to take out the other items you'll need so you can see what you'll need here. You're gonna need some, um, I have here my um, ATG uh, it, gun. It's an ATG, advanced tape glider, if you didn't know that. We have some foam tape. We're gonna have our, our stamping block. We have two things of ink. So we have the green and the black. We of course have some twine, which is my handy dandy fine favorite to go to or go to. <laughs> um, we have our card base right here. We have our um, paper to, to stamp on. I'm also going to show you that when you actually do this project, you'll need some decorative paper like I've shown you. And you'll also need some acrylic right here like that. I don't know if you can see it very well, but uh, this will be good. We'll just do this, okay? So you have the acrylic. You'll also need some sequins. And you'll need a punch. And you'll need some scissors. We've got a lot of stuff for this creation, that is for sure. And then, of course, um, you have your stamping block, and of course you'll need your stamps. So that will be, I'll put this right here this stamp set right here, okay? So that basically shows you what you're gonna need. Um, you'll also need, of course, the um, uh, the Big Shot, the platforms, etc., etc. But this is basically the tools that you'll need to create it in addition to your dies and or your punches and your um, Big Shot and platforms, etc., etc. So let's get started on this part. So what we need right now is I think we can do a number of things, but the first thing we're gonna do is, I know it sounds silly and not everybody does it, and it might be a little obvious, but I like to point out the obvious because sometimes people don't think about it. Um, the one thing about sequins, I don't know if you realize, is they can stick together. So what I like to do, besides make a mess, because I'm really good at that too, um, I like to make sure that the sequins are kind of pulled apart because sometimes they stick together like this little bugger right here is stuck together and sometimes they'll stick together sometimes they won't so I will just take them and kind of play with them just a little bit to make sure they're kind of separated because like this one had four together with it and sequins tend to stick together so 
you'll get a lot better flow if you try to pull them apart and make sure that there's a little bit of a flow when they're not all stuck together. So it'll be a cooler shaker box if you do so. So I'm just basically playing with the sequins. So part of this instructions for you is to play with your sequins. <laughs> so you gotta have a little fun with this because if you're not having fun, then it's not gonna come out okay. So you just basically pick whatever sequins you want that will go with your color palette. And you can pick a solid color, you could pick multiple colors, you could pick whatever you want, whatever you think will look good. It's your creative decision. And as you can see, these are basically all kind of pulled apart and they're not um, put like, there's not, oh, actually this one's got two of them too. So as you can see, you saw how much I played with them and made sure that they weren't stuck together. Sometimes it just still keeps happening. So we're just gonna play with these a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put them up on my card and I'm gonna set them aside because that way we can make sure we get the other stuff done first. Okay, so we have that. So we're gonna take this piece out and we're going to take out the piece that we already uh, em um, embossed, okay? So we're gonna take these two pieces out and we're going to take out our ATG gun. Now this ATG gun, I really like the adhesive. Um, it's very strong and it works really, really super duper well. I like it because not only does it work super well and it sticks, but it also is a great um, way to utilize uh, the adhesive and you have a lot of different options to be able to make sure that you have um, plenty to use and it's not super expensive to maintain or to use. So that's why I like to utilize my ATG gun. So hopefully that will help you. And don't forget, um, those of you who may not like to go shopping at the big box stores, um, they do have a, a coupon that you can use at the big box stores for this, because this is, it tends to be a little bit pricey, but half price is a little bit more palatable. So if you wanted to get this, I would suggest go to a big box store and use your 40% off or 50% off coupon and make sure that you go to your local scrapbook stores for all the other fantastic items that you want to get. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and flip it over because we're using this part and we're just going to put some adhesive on here and we want to make sure we put enough adhesive so that it'll stay okay and sometimes my finger gets stuck to the adhesive that's okay though right that makes you sure that it works right so you want to make sure that you put adhesive all the way around the edges because if you don't it won't stick as well and you don't want it to come up when your shaker box is finished, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this right here and you can put it down this way, which is the way it's bent, or put it down the flat or the way, you know, the opposite. I'm gonna put it down the opposite because I actually wanna um, kinda have it so that it doesn't bend that way. I don't want it to just naturally bend this way. I'd rather have it almost against the grain if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna bend it back a little bit to try to straighten it out and you can just kind of roll it like this. And that straightened it out pretty well. And then instead of using the part where it's sticking out on that side, I'm using the flatter part. And I'm gluing it right to this. So I wanna line it up, and then we're gonna press down firmly. You wanna make sure that you have all the edges the way they need to be. I basically overshot it a little bit, so I'm gonna pull this off carefully. Fortunately, this stuff, when you first use it, will come off right away, but you don't wanna leave it too long because sometimes it can stay and then you rip your paper. Been there, done that. So, and you wanna be gentle when you remove it too because it doesn't help when you just rip it because you will rip your item. Okay, so you lined it up and you just push down firmly. Make sure you got all the edges. Super firm. And there, you're good, okay? So what it's gonna look like is this. This is gonna be the front of your shaker card, okay? So you're gonna take this, turn it over. We're using the back part again. And you're going to easily just take out your scissors and your foam tape. Now it's important that you use foam tape. I have a little bit of a thinner tape, as you can see here. It might be 1 8th or 1 16th of an inch. It's pretty thin. You'd probably rather use like a half inch almost, but because I don't have anything, or even a quarter inch, I'm not sure exactly. No, probably a half inch would be best. Um, but because I don't have anything thicker, I'm gonna use two sets of it. And basically I'm gonna take this, do one set a square around, and then I'll do another one on top of it. So that's how I'm gonna get the dense, uh, the depth of the, shaker box. 
These directions may seem a little bit overwhelming. I can understand how they might be. However, the good news is, is once you get it, it's really super easy. It's just trying to make sure that you understand what you're doing. So please don't get frustrated. Just watch the video over and over again. I promise you, you will be thrilled and happy and really excited about this new technique. Now, shaker cards have been around for quite some time. Um, it's kind of coming back into the, to the, uh, mainstream again and I think it's great. I think it adds a little bit of dimension and it adds a little bit of fun to your creations and who doesn't love a little bit of dimension and fun. But I will say that there are a lot of different ways you can create them and I'm hoping that this ex expands your horizons and your ideas on how to create them and maybe make something different that you may not have normally done before and really kind of challenging yourself. I want to make sure that you're trying to be creative and um, utilize that beautiful creative brain that you've got going, okay? So, we're gonna just simply line up this around the uh, die cut area, okay? So we've got this right like that. You're gonna push down firmly. It's very important you push down firmly because you don't want your embellishments in your shaker card to escape. <laughs> that would be bad. So if you notice here, what I did was I put a line all the way around the edges. And if you notice, there's a little bit over here that there's a space, okay? Now that's okay because what I like to do is when I'm gonna do the second set, I don't line it up exactly the same. Like if you notice, I did these here and then I cut there in between and then did this there. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlay the next tape on top of that. So anywhere there's a crease, I'm gonna put some tape on top of it so there's not a crease. That's just to make sure that nothing escapes because you never know, sometimes it happens. So we're gonna take this and, oops, first I wanna remove the tape that's on top of the tape to protect it so it doesn't stick to anything else. So that's what we're gonna do is remove it. I can never have enough garbage cans. I seriously, within a five foot radius, I think I have three garbage cans. When I was younger, they used to call me Messy Missy. True story. At least now I know why. I like to craft, and I don't know any crafter that's really that super duper clean about it. So that must have been my calling way back when, and I just didn't know. So as you can see here, I'm gonna show you a close up. See where that little part is right there? I'm gonna cover that up and then cut it at the edge. So that way there isn't any possibility of anything sneaking through. So I just line it right up and then we're gonna trim it. And like I said, I apologize for the longer video, but I wanted to make sure that you knew exactly what you were doing and make sure that you had no problems or questions and I thought that would be a problem um, if I made it short and sweet because not everybody likes short and sweet, they like all the details. Now, one other thing I did is I bought when I bought this tape I took it and I cut it like this because I don't need something really super thick. I just needed something thin. So I'm cutting it right down the middle so I can utilize it for my shaker card. So I just ran out a little bit, so I'm gonna just cut that up for you. So another little tip, which is always helpful because we like to utilize our stuff and make sure that um, we try to be fiscally responsible and as crafters, we can really get out of hand sometimes because there's so many great things out there. And it's awesome, but sometimes it's like, ah! So, so we have that. And as you can see, I just basically separated it. So now I have basically double the tape. So we're going to place this right here. I'm gonna cut this edge just so it's a little bit more even. Throw the extra out. So I'm gonna do this right here cover over that crack, and then I'm gonna stop right where the next one will line up, which is right coming up here. So I'll do that. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. And we have this piece right here. We're gonna line up right in there, like so. And just trim it right here. Okay. Perfect. Now, this right here has a little space like the last one, so I'm just gonna cover it and go right up to there. So then we'll be set with our uh, dimension for our shaker card. 
and I have to trim it. So like I said, this may be a little bit long, but I figured you wanted to make sure, excuse me, exactly how to make this, and I wanted to make sure there weren't any questions. So we have this here, like so. Okay, so I'm going to leave the top part on it because I don't want to have any of the items on here um, get stuck to anything until I'm ready to put it on the card base. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the card base. Now you can do either way. You can do a card base like this, or of course you can do the standard card, which is more often like this. I like to do something a little bit different lately, so I've been doing it so it opens up. I think that's kind of cool. Now what we're going to do, and you don't have to do this, but I thought it'd be kind of a cool little embellishment. And I'm kind of trying to throw all these different little things that you can do with this creation so that you have the ability to do a bunch of different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my uh, stamp block. And since I use stars for the um, uh, in, uh, embossing, I'm going to use a very light line outline of a star for the background. So I'm just placing this right on there. And I'm just going to do a few little green ones. Now you could utilize a whole bunch of them and then just put one solid color underneath. But I'm going to do just a few of the green stars because I don't want it to be too much. And I also want to make sure that I highlight all of the um, sequins I'm using. So we'll just simply stamp a few stars. Just a random pattern. And I'm going to use probably seven. Uh, rule of thumb for design is you typically don't want to use an even number because if you do, it tends to look a lot, a little bit like cut off or lopsided. So I'll use one, two, three, four. So I need one more place to put one, and I think I'll put it right there. So it's not perfectly even, not perfectly um, set. So that is that. Um, oh, there's a little bit of blurb there. I think I'll put one right on top of that too. So I guess I'll make it nine. How you like that? And again, this is a perfect example of when you're creating and you can make a little mistake. And granted, I could leave it, no one would probably know, but I'm gonna try to clean it up a little bit and everybody makes mistakes, so this is how you fix it. I'm just gonna do one right on top of it. So that looks good. And then maybe we'll do one right there. So it looks like it was on purpose. What do you think? Okay, so we're gonna do that. That's all set. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to clean off my stamp. I have a little pad that I use to wipe off my stamp and dry it off and I'm going to set it aside. And I'm going to get out the sentiment. So what I've been doing lately is I have been um, putting my sentiment down face first and in doing so I am able to line it up and then it seems to work out better. So that is what I'm going to do. Again, this is also the Spinner Greeting stamp set. So you know that that's what I'm using. And I just merely pulled off the, the stamp and then we're going to line them up right here. Okay, so we're lining it up the way I think they'll work and look good. And you're putting them the way that you want them to be seen. And the reason why you're doing that is because you're going to push down the stamp block right on top of it and then you'll be ready to stamp. It's a cool little te technique I've been doing lately and I really like it. it. seems to work pretty well. So let's see if this looks good. It's pretty close I think. I think that looks good. So I'm just going to take my block and I'm going to just press right down. And I think that looks really good, but I'm going to straighten it out just a little bit. I think it moved while I was putting it on. And the middle word needs to go up just a little bit. Let's see, just a little bit. I know I'm really picky. I can't help it. I wish I wasn't, but I am. So I embrace it about myself and just keep going. All right, graduation's a little crooked. I think we're good. I think we're, well, 
I, now I think I'm good. <laughs> I know, it's terrible. Sorry, I gotta line it up. Yeah, it's a little crooked. I really wish I wasn't this retentive, but I am, so I'm sorry. You get to witness it firsthand. Isn't that great? You're so lucky. All right, we've got graduation a little crooked, but now we're straight. I think that looks good. Hopefully you do too, and hopefully it'll come out well. Okay, so we're going to take our paper. And by the way, I keep my stamp sets in envelopes. There's a whole bunch of different ways to do that, but I keep them in envelopes um, just because it's easier for me to grab, and that's the way I like to do it. So let me take out the paper to stamp with. And I'm also going to take out my black ink. So we're going to open up our black ink. And if you've seen my videos before, you know that I like to do a few of these because I like to have some extra on hand. So I'm just gonna easily stamp this right here like this. And we'll stamp some right here. I like to do a few of them just so I have a few on hand, like I said. And then, again, you don't need to do this, but I like to do it while I'm out. I'm sorry, while I have things out. I'm just talking halfway. I think sometimes you guys are expected to know what I'm talking about. If you don't, I'm sorry, we call them Melissa-isms and you'll catch on after watching a few videos. <laughs> it's entertaining for all of us. Sometimes, le sometimes um, more than less more people than less, sometimes less than more, depends. At any rate, so here we are. We have our stamped sentiment, okay? So we're gonna take out our uh, punch and our punch is gonna help us create the look we're looking for. So we're just gonna take it and I like to punch upside down so that the bottom of the punch, you can see exactly where you're punching out that way there's no mistakes and you know exactly what you're getting. So I think this looks good. We're gonna punch that guy out. And this is a backwards one, that's okay. We're gonna punch this guy out too. And then we have this one here. Looks good. And then this one. And you don't have to use these, of course, on a shaker card, but at least you have them ready to go so you can embellish them later. And then you keep them in little envelopes so you have them ready to rock and roll. So we're gonna take out our little uh, stamped area here. And all we're gonna need here is we're gonna use some of our foam tape and just put a little foam tape on the back Actually, you know what? Let's do the twine first. That's probably a better idea. We can do it either way, but it's probably better that we have the twine um, on here and then we can stick the adhesive to it and then use it on top of there. So we're going to just take this simply and hold it like this. And then we're gonna wrap it around. I'm gonna do it three times. And then we're gonna trim it. I tend to trim it a little bit long, just in case I need it for something extra. I'm going to um, make this just a knot. I'm not going to make it a bow, so it's pretty simple to do. You just tie a little knot right here, like so. And then you're gonna trim off the edges. You don't want it too long, because it looks kind of silly if it's too long. There. All set, and here's my extra twine. We will keep that to the side. So that is what this looks like. Oops. And while we have this foam tape out, I'm just gonna cut some off. I'm not gonna double it up. I'm just gonna leave it like it is because I think that'll be just fine. And then I'm gonna put a little piece right across the back. So I think that'll work well, like so. And then I'm just gonna set this aside until we need to use it. So, now we're gonna come back to this. This right here is the front part of your shaker, and this is the base of your card, okay? So what we're gonna do now 
and this is what I found is the easiest to do when creating a shaker card, is you're just gonna place all of your sequins on top of your card. That's the easiest for me. Um, I've done it a number of different ways. I've probably made these about 30 or 40 times, and I've probably made them seven times in the past week, um, including the time where I got my head uh, hit by my camera. That was so fun. I was not a happy camper, needless to say. Now, I have a whole bunch of sequins here. I think it's quite a bit, actually. I think it's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna take some of it out and maybe take a little bit more of the green out just so that there's just a little bit of green in there. I like the orange for sure though, because I think the orange really makes it pop. So, whoops. So, I think this is good. Now I've got little sequins, I've got large sequins, I've got all different colors and sizes. So I'm gonna show you a close-up of that so you can see the different sizes and, and things that I'm using before I place the card part on top. So these are the different sizes. This will give you a little idea of what I did. Okay, so this is what I do. Um, I would make sure that you put it in the middle so that you don't get anything stuck on anything. And this really works well, especially when um, you're creating shaker cards. So that way you don't have to worry about um, trying to line it up upside down or having this stuff in here. This has really worked for me, so hopefully it'll work for you too. Okay, so now we're just gonna take off this back adhesive part. And last but not least, we have this. Now, what you're gonna do is simply line it up. Now, you can decide which way you want it, whether you want it this way or this way or whatever you want. Um, and remember, you could also make this card going this way if you wanted to. That would work too. So I'm gonna use it this way, but I'm actually going to um, create it so that it goes up and down. I think this looks good. So you're just gonna basically place it right down. I'm gonna do it lightly in case I need to adjust it at all. This looks good. Looks lined up. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna push down and I'm gonna rub it really hard and make sure that it's really stuck to that paper underneath because you don't want it to not be. Okay, so I'm gonna do it again and just really push it down. And there may be a little bit of adhesive. You can wipe that away. It'll wipe right off. And then, oops, there's a little piece of adhesive. And then just push it down really well. And fuzz. So make sure you're, as you can see, I'm stressing that you make sure you push it down really hard because you don't want any of your pieces to come out, okay? now. Like I said, there's other ways to make this. There's different embossing, there's different um, ways to create it, and if you wanted to have a different look like this, this isn't so distracting, this is a little bit more distracting, and this isn't distracting at all because it's clear. So there's a lot of different ways you can create this. So it's important that you decide what kind of look you're looking for too. So we're just gonna make sure this is good, looks good to me, shaker's working, Woohoo! So that's great, right? How do you like that? It's kind of neat, huh? Just a little different texture and a little bit different creation. So that is basically how you make a shaker. It's really not too hard. It's really the, the little pieces that you have to put together that tends to make it a little bit more difficult than it really needs to be. So now we're just going to finish off this awesome card. And the other thing I suggest, which I've done before too, again, lesson learned, make sure that you check to see which way your card opens and closes before you put on your sentiment. You know how many times I have created a card, put the sentiment like this and the card opens like this? Not a good idea. So make sure you check it out. Now again, you could create this card and have it like this. I think that would be really cool. I might even do that for this one. Um, but. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, and I think they all look great. So I'm going to do this one this way just to show you something a little bit different because we like to mix it up a little bit and throw those ideas out to really get your creative juices flowing. So we've got this one right here. Okay. You want to make sure that sticks really well. Because it's acrylic, sometimes it'll have a hard time sticking. So I love it. I think it's great. 
and we have created our own shaker card and we even used recycled parts here by just using some old packaging. Now how many times do we get those acrylic clamshells on whatever packaging that's happening? You could cut out any flat piece um, and even small pieces you can make tags out of them. I just I really love to keep that stuff because I hate to buy it. You can buy it in sheets but why buy it if you've already bought it in a product, right? So we love this. Very cool. Shake, shake, shake. You like it? I hope you like it. It's pretty cool, huh? Okay, so we have this one. And then, of course, we have this one. Now, this is the more clear one, as you can see. And then, of course, and this one opens like this. This one opens like this. And this one also opens up like this. So, I hope that you really enjoyed this tutorial today. And please make sure that you try to check this out. It's not too difficult. I know you'll love it once you do it, I promise. And make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and of course to our blog so that you can enter to, to uh, be a winner. And uh, you can do that by going to our website at www.acreativejourneywithmelissa.com or www.acjwm.com. And you can click on our blog, sign up for our newsletter and our um, our blog post and make sure you go to our YouTube channel. All of our social media um, uh, access points are at the top of our website and you can just click on any of those icons and check out our stuff there. And again, please make sure you have a fantastic day and I really hope you enjoyed going on a creative journey with Melissa. Have a great day. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye-bye.